I want to talk a bit about example 2.16, which is also found in the textbook. The idea is that we want to read um, A's, B's, and C's, where the number of A's is the same as the number of B's, or the number of A's is the same as the number of C's. Um, as you might imagine, this is a non-regular language. How would we represent it in a PDA? I will give you some time. By this I mean you should pause the video, and you should try to do it yourself. Then I'm going to show you my solution. And we're going to go through a few, um, some acceptance ex examples. And finally, we're going to be talking about this OR uh, and think about how can we represent two PDAs, the union of PDAs. So uh, hit pause and I'm going to show you my solution. The idea is to have... Uh, either we, because it's the number of A's, right, A's is going to be always either the number of A's is the same as the number of B's or B's is, A's is number, as many A's as C's. So in the first step, we can just read a certain number of A's and we push N things to the stack. So now we have a stack with N things. And now what do we do? We non-deterministically go to one of these two branches. Either we are on this branch and we first read as many B's as we want. So first one, A's and B's have to be the same. So we're going to read B's only if we pop, uh, only by popping A's from the stack. And then we can read as many C's as we want. Or we go non-deterministically, um, or we could have chosen the second branch where we would just read as many B's as we want, and then non-deterministically, leaving the stack unchanged, and then non-deterministically, when we, once we're done with B's, we go to C's, and we can only read C's if we read a, a pop A's from it. So the, num the stack numbers either constrain C's or constrains B's, according to each of these two rules. So let's see what I did. Uh, I have a Q1, where Q1 is where I read my A's, and then once I'm done, I go either here, and in this branch, I'm constraining B's to have as many B's as A's, or I go this way, and I'm constraining the C's to be as many as A's. So this is where I read C's, and if you notice, uh, I read B's without touching the stack. And here, I read A's without touching the stack. And notice that here, I'm I'm reading C and popping, but this could also be epsilon epsilon and would be directly. It's just how they give it in the in the book. So these are the two options. Uh, so does this work? I don't know. Let's see. Does it accept A, A, B, B, C, C? So here that everything has the same number, some number of A, some number of B's. And if you try to do this yourself, uh, with the PDA that I gave you, you will see that you have all of this and finally you reach two final states. So there's actually two possible ways, right? Because you can either go this way and accept it or go this way and accept it. So let's see the next example. We have as many A's as C's, so which means we have to go this branch. So I invite you to try to do it yourself, try to do the derivation graph. And if you do it, you'll get something like this. Okay. Um, next, what we want, we want more B's and C's. So we want as many A's as B's. So now we have to go this way. Uh, and now we have this graph. And notice that if we go on Q1, we can go either Q4 and we read the B's that we want, two B's. But because we, we did not push, uh, we only read one C, in Q5, we're left with a stack that only has A, and at this point we get stuck. So there's here a, even a branch that goes a bit further, right, where it goes this way. 
Um, but because there's only one C, it gets stuck in Q5. Cannot read the second A. So it never reaches Q6. So the only possible path is the one that goes this way. What about this one? Has more Bs than Cs. Um, so same A's and same B's. And you'll see a similar phenomenon where at some point here you read two A's and then you go here, right? And then you read two B's, consume two A's, and now your stack is empty. Um, but you have no way of reading C's. Or is it Q2? And here, you are in Q4, you have two A's, and then you read B, and read B, and read the, the third B, and you still have two A's, and then eventually you read um, C, consume the A, read the other C, consume the A, and finally you should conclude so this is actually this graph is incomplete. I'm going to upload a correction of it. <laughs>